welcome to the Fantasy Otters Show. I'm your host, Jacoby Cassell. I'm Chase Lukey. And we are the Fantasy Otters. A little bit about myself, I co-founded the Fantasy Otter back in 2009. Since then, I have been blogging and podcast and web series that focus very much on how much I know about stats. <laughs> I'm Chase. I've been playing fantasy football since I don't know how long. And I am here to disagree and argue with every stat that this man brings up. He thinks he knows stuff. All right, let's get into our week one topic, waiver wire do and don'ts. The biggest thing is do. Do take advantage of week one's waiver wires. There are a lot of people on the waiver wire right now that can help you win a fantasy Super Bowl. Totally. And uh, the other end of the spectrum is don't freak out. Week one, it doesn't really show what the potential of your team is. Say owners of an Andrew Luck. Don't freak out. It's week one. Andrew played a good defense. Mm. Yeah, and to put that in perspective, after just one week of fantasy football last year, the number one quarterback was Jake Locker. Do you know where Jake Locker is now? I have no idea. Nobody knows where he is now. He literally retired from the game. And the number one, actually the least one of the lower running backs was Jamal Charles. Only scored three points in last week's in last, um, last year's week one. Totally. And yes. obviously no one's worried about Jamal. He's elite. So don't get put too much on week one. But with that being said, we're going to talk about some people that we think will honestly help your team and provide depth. So we're going to go position by position, talk about my pick, his pick, and our collective sleeper pick. Let's get into it. Uh, my choice for quarterback week one comes as no surprise. Marcus Mariota mm. had a fantastic week. Four touchdowns, 209 yards, only 13 passes. Didn't even have to run the ball, and he got points. Playing against a subpar Tampa Bay team, and he will go against a subtar, subpar Cleveland team next week. Yeah, for sure. I, of course, you're going to choose Marcus Mariota. That's so mainstream. It's hard to argue against production. All right. Well, my expert choice is Tyrod Taylor. Tyrod Taylor, not as mainstream as Marcus Mariota, but still solid production and available in a lot of leagues as he is only owned in 12% of all ESPN standard. This is somebody that was throwing 77% completion, had 195 yards, and a touchdown. Nothing too flashy, but he's definitely a secure pick. Definitely a solid quarterback, too. Um, our collective sleeper pick for this week was Alex Smith of the Kansas City Chiefs. Mm -hmm. Only 19% owned in ESPN leagues, but he threw for 243 and three touchdowns. That's a lot of touchdowns coming from a Chiefs team that didn't throw any to a receiver last year. Yeah, this is definitely somebody that we think can be on a winning roster for a fantasy Super Bowl. This is somebody that is not too much going on, but he's not going to throw a lot of interceptions, and he's going to give solid production. Nothing too flashy, but he's, he's not an elite, but he's definitely solid. Oh, and we do have a message for those of you who currently own Peyton Manning. Peyton is not somebody that should be worried about. He's somebody that's going to turn it around. Last year, he had two kind of off games where his QBR was 33. He immediately turned it around the following game with a QBR of 95 or higher. That's good production. For all me. right. Now we're moving on to the number one position in all of fantasy, as many experts would say. That's the running back position. Uh, my choice this week for the running back position is the tandem going to start week two for the Arizona Cardinals. Chris and David Johnson. They're brothers. They're not brothers. Chris Johnson is going to be the starter next week, although he didn't have a very big sample size week one. We know he's going to get the ball. Bruce Arians wants to give him the ball. He's only owned in 11% mm -hmm. of leagues right now. It's a good start. As well as David Johnson for PPR leagues especially. Last week he only caught a 55-yard touchdown. That's it. But he's only owned in 37% of leagues. Yeah, okay. and this is a good handcuff with Ellington out. For right now, one of these guys are really going to come onto the scene. My pick is, I can't believe I'm actually saying this in a real professional setting, but Bishop Sankey. I know Bishop Sankey became a big punchline for fantasy owners last year as he only had two touchdowns all season long. But I think Bishop might be back. I think this might be the year that he can turn it around. He is owned in 75% of leagues, which means there's a quarter of you that might be able to pick him up. 
But if you can get him and he is currently on your waiver wire, definitely pick him up. He is the number one running back in Tennessee right now. And with Marcus Mariota there, he's definitely going to be able to help out. Having a solid quarterback really opens up the run game. And this is somebody that on yesterday had 12 attempts, 6.6 yards per carry, and he had about 80 yards and a touchdown. So that's solid as a QBR, or, or as an RB1. Yeah, solid running back. Mm -hmm. um, our sleeper collectively this week was Carlos Williams of the Buffalo Bills. Uh, solid. He's a backup to Shady, but 7% uh, owned in uh, ESPN leagues. Mm -hmm. Six for 55, one touchdown. He's going to get in the end zone. They're going to give him goal line looks. Definitely a guy you got to watch out for. Yeah, this is definitely a guy that should be on your watch list. Moving on to a little bit deeper position, but something that I'm sure you guys will need depth at, and that's the wide receiver spot. What I chose as my wide receiver pickup is James Jones. I know James Jones is not as solid as uh, like a running back one, I mean, sorry, a wide receiver one, but he is somebody that can get production. Last year he was gone, he was in Oakland, and obviously no one's gonna have a good season when they're in Oakland. But he has come back to the Packers, and he has really got involved in the mix as the um, wide receivers there in um, Green Bay. I see Aaron Rodgers mixing up the play, the passes between his three receivers. Uh, even yesterday, we saw Devontae Adams get eight targets, Cobb got four, five targets, and James Jones got four targets, but three of those were end zone targets, and two of them turned into touchdowns. So this is somebody that if he's going to use in the red zone, we should definitely keep an eye on. Definitely going to be a touchdown depending guy for yeah. you fantasy owners. He will be up and down, but there's really a lot of upside there. Um, my choice was another Buffalo Bill, uh, Percy Harvin. Tremendous upside. Uh, although he's very uh, injury prone, yes, he is. He, uh, he's only owned in 44% of leagues. And if he continues playing at a level that he played at week one with the 75 yards and a touchdown, uh, it's going to be a very good pickup for your fantasy team. Yeah, for sure. This is not a guy that you should go out and get. But if he is available, you should definitely try to get a hold of him. Don't trade for him because we do know he has struggled with injury. Last thing you want to do is trade for somebody that's going to get hurt right away. Definitely. And then our sleeper uh, wide receiver that we're really excited about here at the Otter is Nate Washington. Nate Washington is now in Houston, and he's running opposite of DeAndre Hopkins. This is a guy that a lot of people went under the radar, and we do mean a lot because he's owned in 1.5% of all fantasy leagues, which means 99% of you can go pick him up right now. But this is solid production as like a, uh, a wide receiver two or even a flex as he got 105 yards on five receptions yesterday. Just imagine if he would have gotten a single touchdown, his pointage would have been crazy. Yeah, and he was getting looked at a lot by even the, even though our quarterback in Houston is, isn't anything so flashy. He got 11 targets, I believe. That's, mm -hmm. it, 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 it's, the production's gonna be there, guys. Yeah, for so, sure. Definitely a good, solid, Sleeper for you pickups. All right, so now we're moving on to the position that we think really revealed itself to be extremely deep in week one, and that's the tight end position. There was tight ends taking up all over in week one. Obviously, Rob Gronkowski, Jimmy Graham, the bigger names. But here's some people that can maybe be on a winning team and uh, for your fantasy team, but they're probably on the waiver wire right now. Um, the one I chose for all my Buck fans out there, uh, Austin Safarian Jenkins. Mm, yes. Very low ownage, ownage rate, but... It's Jameis Winston's safety blanket, and we sh it showed week one. I thought Jameis Winston's lawyer was his safety blanket. No, no. Talking about on the field. On the field, his safety blanket. He got five catches for 110 yards and two touchdowns. Mm -hmm. It's going to be like this all year. He's going to be open for Jameis, and Jameis will eventually find him. Yeah, for sure. And my guy is Jared Cook. This is a household name. We all know Jared Cook in St. Louis. But I think one of the things is Nick Foles is definitely looking to him early on. We see this early in the season as he's only owned in 5% of leagues. However, he went 5 receptions for 85 yards yesterday, and he is getting those uh, red zone looks, which means he could open up for touchdowns in the future. Our deepest sleeper of the day mm -hmm. will be at the tight end position. It is Scott Chandler of the New England Patriots. Yes, this is a guy that we think is really deep. Uh, he's not going to put give up solid production right away, but as you know, back a couple years ago, how Rob Gronkowski used to run opposite of Aaron Hernandez, this is somebody that we think could fit that Aaron Hernandez role. This is somebody that can come onto the scene. He, he did have a touchdown yesterday, and that's big, or in week one. So that's something that you're going to see a lot. And then when Rob Gronkowski gets there, not if, we know it's going to happen, this is definitely the guy you want on your roster, as he will quickly become a tight end one. And if you have that spot on your team, 4.4% only own it in ESPN, so it's 
going to be available in your league. Mm -hmm. And then before we go, we want to tell you a couple plug and plays that we have on defense. These are obviously people that you're not going to use every week, but right now we try to favor their matchups so we think they have these sneaky plays. Uh, first is the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, they're owned in a decent amount of leagues with 73%, but if they're available in your league, it's a good pickup for this week because they're playing the Oakland Raiders minus Derek Carr. Uh, Oakland's not too good, so you, you also want to play them. Uh, another deep sleeper for defense is the Tennessee Titans. They played very well last week against the Buccaneers with two picks, mm -hmm. and this week they play quite possibly a worse offense in Johnny Manziel. Wow, they're just going to like stop all over the two Heisman winners. That's crazy. Yep. All right. Well, that about does it for today's show. We really want to get involved with your fantasy team, though, so please reach out to us either on Twitter at the Fantasy Otter, Instagram at the Fantasy Otter, on our um, email. You can email us at fantasyotter at gmail.com. And as always, please leave, comments in the, in the, please leave comments below to tell us where we went wrong. Until next time, watch your waivers. Don't trust the system. Otter knows. Look, it's just shows I'm not, not even caught. <laughs>